This is Michaela Bensko with VeteransInPain.org. Today we're having a conversation on PRP in the VA with VIP veteran and ambassador, uh, Jonathan Farber. So can you explain that again regarding PRP and Medicare? It would be standing alone. So a secondary treatment, it would be an adjunct. So like they're doing, say, a uh, knee surgery and whatever, if they're removing, fixing a tear, whatever, they will also put PRP, platelet-rich plasma, into the area that they performed work. Similar with shoulders, like knees, uh, even from what I've understood, certain like organ-related surgeries will do the same thing too. To okay, so basically, surgery. if you're having the surgery that you've been trying to prevent by having the the more um, therapeutic non-surgical measure of the injection, then, then, then you can, then you can utilize PRP, which, which, which is just the injection, as long as you're having the surgery. Yes. And they're kind of, <laughs> like, you'll see, like, if you look into data on post-surgery recovery, they have a higher success rate with the surgeries that got PRP. Which is great, which is great. Right. That is good. Uh, so, but as a standalone measure, it is for non-healing, non-responsive wounds, but it does not state whether or not it's um, an external sore, right. sore or something uh, degenerative within a joint, right? Correct. I don't know if billing codes by, like numerically mean something by region or area. I'm, I'm not a billing code expert. Whether the, the codes have something in it that I don't know, I don't know. So, but as far as I can tell, like in the definitions. So right now, if they're saying offers PRP, what they're really saying is that anything that Medicare covers or has a coding for, which is the primary program for veterans, then it can be offered and coverage may be provided. Is that correct? I don't have any experience with PRP within the VA, but I have been told by people who I think would know that like they offer it for knees too. So not just like the unhealing wounds, which is what there's a billing code for, but. And for, um, for knees with osteoarthritis. I, I would assume. Like, That's what I, I understand. Go into detail, but yeah. So, okay. I'll, I'll read off the, the three billing codes that exist for light literature. Spend. So it's G. 0460, uh, which is descriptions autologous platelet rich plasma for chronic wounds, ulcers, or slash ulcers, including phlebotomy, centrifuge, and all other preparatory procedures, administration, and dressings per treatment. Okay, next one is P9020, which just is platelet rich, rich plasma each unit. And then the temporary code, which is 0232T is injections, platelet-rich plasma, any site, including image guidance, harvesting, and preparation when performed. My so it, it's vague. It's so and, vague, it hurts. I mean, I'm not a billing code expert as far as if there's something I should know that I just don't to make more out of this. Right. Or if they're left intentionally vague to allow for physicians or the hospitals to bill for procedure. I don't know. I'm assuming more the latter, but to give them some leeway in treating patients. And like when going and looking at why, so it's not considered safe and effective for orthopedics, the standard practice seems to be single treatment of PRP into whatever joint it is uh, and then return to normal care. So, but this is at sites with osteoarthritis. So, so to clarify what that means is within the parameters of coverage with Medicare, that means that within the knee for, for, for these purposes, that you may undergo one round of PRP and that is all. And afterwards, um, traditional care, customary care, means using ice and SEDS steroid injections, which is the, which have been proven to uh, degenerate the quality of the bone and tissue by 
every time. And you're, you're not even supposed to have more than one or two a year, but you really shouldn't have any at all because it's not therapeutic in nature and it only causes damage. Right. So then the point of success is measured at nine months after a single injection. Um, hmm. And looking at clinical data, so for using PRP alone, unless it's a new injury, say a like soft tissue injury, before it's been uh, like allowed to you know manifest arthritis, it's three injections usually will prevent surgery. Now, it, it, with older ones, it's three to five. Will Hold on, surgery. so three injections of PR, PRP or or. Yes. Yeah, about PRP. Well, three. Okay, so three injections over what period of time? It, it, they don't. There's a, a span. So some it's thirty day intervals, some it's ninety day intervals, and some it's like yearly intervals. Um, it, it really depends on the joint. So shoulders uh, seem to adapt better. Like so, one, and then they'll like see most of the benefits within three to six months, and do an, another injection three to six months, and by that third, they seem to be able to avoid shoulder replacement, like even just an orthoscopic surgery for to, to expand the AC joint, I think is what it's called, mm -hmm. get frozen shoulder and other stuff. That's so, um, that's fascinating to me. I mean, that's something with, I mean, everything we've been doing, we certainly see the results. There's no question about that. That's, that's, but that's a, a certain, that's a statistic in particular that, that I haven't heard before. It's very interesting and it's kind of neat. And that's so that's clinical reporting. So doctors reporting like success with their patients. And as far as like gold standards for statistics goes, that's in like this medium trustworthy area. It's like, oh, like we're reporting for ourselves um, instead of like a double blind study, which is what the ones on osteoarthritis were. Like they, they had different materials that they're using, mostly not saline or something similar to measure. But yeah, it's the, like the data is out there. There's no question about it. We were working with different networks and organizations where it's proven, PRP's proven, um, BMAX proven. Uh, these things are proven. It's, it's it's not a question of whether or not they work. It's a matter of whether or not people want to want to admit that they work, and and um, the entities that be, or whether or not they know or or have heard that they work or have been convinced that they work. And so it's very frustrating, but it's also it's things like like this, that they give you hope because when, when you, it's all information, like whether or not you like the information or not, it's very telling. And it gives us something to work with, to build on, to put into our argument in our initiative. So, you know, I may not like what I'm hearing, but it's very useful. I mean, it's, I mean, without going to like insurance or like revenue based restrictions, it's still at, at three to five procedures is a cost saving procedure compared to like, a, 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 from what I understand, even like a minor shoulder or orthoscopic so shoulder surgery, which I don't know if they're the most routine or second most, I have to look again, like say performed by the VA. I think it's knees is first and then shoulders. So 15 to $50,000 for a surgery, well, say you're doing like the most expensive PRP, I think is 3000, which includes not just PRP, but like, so platelet rich plasma along with platelet poor plasma, whether it's like an off the shelf product, like an amniotic product, or even there's, there's a bunch of others now, I guess, available. Like, and so and 3000 times three is nine. And so no, it has uh, proteins and hyaluronic acids and growth factors in it that um, they're highly effective, right? But in and of itself is not a, a, a regenerative stem cell procedure or protocol. And yet look at how effective it is. And it's something that many physicians start out with because it's less costly and can be highly effective. But the minute that people hear, oh, I have to do it again and again, yeah, you know, and when oftentimes they really only need to do it one time, but the fact that they might have to do it twice, it freaks them out and go, oh, it must not work. Yeah. So that's it's interesting. to say like a steroid injection, like 
the repeat of injections. So like no closer than 30 days apart, I think is what I was told when I, I, I talked about getting or for myself getting uh, steroid injections. But I, like after that, it's as many as you need until surgery. So as far as, you know, well, getting a couple rounds of PRP, which is the, the only real difference between a steroid, from what I understand, and PRP is, is, oh, they take some blood first, so it's two needle sticks instead of, well, not counting like the uh, local anesthesia, it's two needle sticks instead of one. Wait, so the VA said that you could have a steroid injection at 30 days up? So that, that, if I remember correctly, it's been three years, that was what the like so i was got i got assessed for uh ridiculopathy so l405 s5 uh l5 s1 ridiculopathy wow because um they're like so it just the pretty sure you just said no more than once a month so no more oh. 30 days i haven't looked that one up specifically but that's what i remember okay um, i've lost i can't breathe because yeah um yeah no it should be no more than twice a year yeah and and even then um, no, Dr. Gerard Malenga, he's a VIP physician out of New York, and he's done an, um, studies on, on this. And it's, it's proven that, yeah, you start with in any joint, any area of the body, you start with steroid injections and, and they degrade the quality of the bone and tissue every time. So, and it's just masking the pain and that's the problem. You know, I mean, we're preaching to the choir, right? I mean, when it, when it comes to a lot of these protocols that, that the VA, you know, we work with the VA and, and facilitate a lot of our veterans from the VA and, and work with a lot of the facilitators and ad administrations, VAs. And it's, it's so frustrating um, because the tools, most of them from PMNR there are opioid prescriptions and physical therapy, but then you get only a certain number of visits for chiropractic and only a certain number of visits for PT and prescription medication, as we mentioned, but anything else, I mean, tell me from your experience with, with your pain management through the VA, I mean, it seems to be extremely limited and not, and, and, and then as far as um, seeing for, for therapy or psychotherapy, I, I don't believe you're even allowed to discuss your physical pain during psychotherapy because that's a different field. So, okay, the, for PMNR specifically, um, like all right, you can get the oral medications. So whether it's opioids or like gabapentin, I think is the most common, um, which is a gabinergic instead of an opioid. And steroids, uh, both oral and injection, um, at least at my PMNR, they do ultrasound guided steroid injections, which I think is a plus. Um, I've heard about other things being done, but from what I can tell, it's either hospital or clinic specific, uh, like nerve hydrodissection, where they stick a needle in around a nerve that is adhered to tissue and find that space between or the place that's not adhered and then fill it with fluid, massage the fluid, use the fluid to separate it as far as like, say, pain relief, especially for like lower back um, and shoulders, I think. Uh, but not something I've seen or been offered. Um, yeah, and then basically it's a waiting game until surgery. So uh, as far as mental health goes, they have a chronic pain program. Uh, I, I've asked to be, you know, be assessed, to go into it, and have not been able to get an actual appointment. I, I got an appointment that they did not assign me an actual practitioner because something between the clinic and the main hospital, from what I can tell, but when calling to leave voicemails to try again, I have not gotten a return. So uh, I think it exists, but no one knows how to get you into it because it's one of those things. It's like, oh, it's not what our normal practice is. So oh. I hear this all the time. And, and that that is so frustrating in that they say very often or veterans will hear very often that something exists or that um, a, a program exists. Oh no, they have that. But in logistically, the access to it is 
very, it's either difficult, it doesn't exist, or it's an administration, administration or their primary care physician has not been informed of it, or they just can't get an appointment with them for the referral, or they can't get the referral. It's, it's like batting it, it's like batting at gnats, it's even finding a gnat to bat. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. Um, and like, it, the best part is, like they all act like ever. Like if you talk to a mystery, they all act like, like you should know as if you work there. But you talk to the two people in the same office, and they will tell you completely different things of how things are supposed to work. Uh, it's mind boggling. So, right. yeah. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to have this chat with me well, today no problem. on this because it it is it is a bit mind boggling and something that. We are working on and you know jonathan we always appreciate you and as of course being a vip veteran ambassador and being a core member of our team you know we appreciate you very much so thanks for joining us today well thank you okay. and for all you do for us thank you all right mutual admiration society signing off bye <laughs>